Hi. Today I am going to kind of answer a question that has been asked so many times of me, but I'm going to answer it in my way. <clears throat> What is your favorite flute? I get that so many times over so many years. And I do not have a favorite flute. The one I just played is the first flute that I ever purchased that sounded musical. Um, the first one was not made correctly. It wasn't, it didn't play in tune to itself through the whole scale, um, which I later found out. But anyway, what I'm going to try and do is narrow down what I like in a flute and what some flute makers that I tend to use their flutes a fair amount in my playing and music, um, what they might have in common to some of those aspects. One thing I'm going to start with is one thing I do not like in a flute in the slightest. And I don't have any good examples to show you. Um, some flutes, I don't know if I can reach it from here. Nah, I can't really reach it. Some flutes have a very flat, large, flat, ended mouthpiece. This one is from uh, Brad Young, Four Wind Flutes, but this is made out of foam. So this one, they can't, if you taper it too much, it's going to be too delicate. So it needs to be a little bit more robust in the way it's made. And I have this, like when I went kayaking and things like that, if I knew I was going to be around a lot of water, this floats. It's a great flute for that kind of thing. And really sounds good. So this, this is at what I would call a uh, borderline flute for me. The flutes that I like have a more tapered mouthpiece. Obvious is like this, kind of a nice, slow, even taper. A nipple style mouthpiece with the exception of, and I hate naming a specific brand, I've tried Butch Hall flutes and their nipple style, instead of kind of being like this, it's almost bordering on flat. I don't like their mouthpiece. I've played a few of their flutes. I, it's just not what I like. These are my personal prejudices. Let me, let me go there first also. Um, one that is kind of borderline is the high spirits flute. It's very flat side to side, but top to bottom, it tapers very nicely and I can rest that 
on my lip and bring it in without it um, bothering my chin, with or without a beard. Um, that feels comfortable to me. The, um, the flatter ones just don't. I, I don't feel like I can bring them down to where I, I am playing them as comfortable. Um, where is it? A wood sounds flute has a, a uh, more tapered but still flat uh, breath hole area. But again, it doesn't hit my chin, doesn't, doesn't do that. It's still what I would call more of a tapered type design. My flutes have almost the opposite design taper over the Wood Sounds flutes. And, and this is one that I, I like a lot, otherwise I wouldn't be putting it on the flutes that I make. Um, <clears throat> now, all we've talked about so far is mouthpiece. The looks of a flute, to me, and, and you can argue all you want to about this, and I understand some of those arguments, the looks of the flute, to me, is very important. If I don't like the way it looks, I'm likely not to pick it up to play it. Um, gosh. I don't have any good examples of something that I'm not crazy about the looks of right now. Um, This, this is the Beltrami, <coughs> excuse me, the Beltrami flute. <clears throat> it's a replica that John Norris made from measurements. Um, it has a very opened mouthpiece, so it doesn't taper as much as what I want to see visually in a flute. It still doesn't affect the way that it sits on my lips when I play it, but this is not visually something that strikes me as being beautiful. Um, it plays great, sounds great. The mouthpiece functions beautifully being wide open to help uh, dry out that slow air chamber. I understand that, but it's not something that I particularly like the looks of. Um, blocky style flutes. Uh, well, I've made PVC flutes. I don't particularly care for the looks of them. They're durable. They're not going to break, you know, if you drop them. Um, they can sound fine. But it's, it's a, it doesn't have smooth, transitions, smooth tapers. It's a bulky design. Not fond of that. Um, so that's looks wise. If a flute has a matte finish, Good examples, right here. Two beautiful flutes. Wood sounds, 
very high gloss, deep, heavy finish. Heart Song Flutes uses a, what I'm going to call a semi-gloss, uh, lighter finish. I believe that this enhances the looks of the wood grain, the high gloss finish, over a matte finish. I like this better. It's also more durable. If it drops, it doesn't get a ding as easily as a lighter finish. I like this finish a lot better, to be honest. Um, the sound of a flute. It's a hard one. Generally, I tend to prefer the sound of a flute when it does not have any kind of a chimney. To me, they sound a little purer. Generally, they sound a little cleaner with less... noise in the flute sound. Um, <clears throat> when a flute has a chimney, I tend to start hearing some added artifacts into the sound. It has, a, uh, this is a great sounding flute, don't get me wrong. And, and some are worse, add more of that noise than others. These are pretty consistently okay um, to my ears. I like a flute that has a good overall tonality in its sound. Um, <clears throat> this flute is this flute. This is a D, the other one was an E. This flute I think has a broader range of harmonics. I can hear some higher harmonics in its voice. Mm -hmm. 
it isn't as mellow, for example, That last one was a D. This is also a D. High spirits, what they call their condor bass. Larger diameter bore tends to make a rounder, bassier, type sound, mellower type sound over one that has a little bit smaller bore for the same given key. Um, <clears throat> so, flute makers that I have tended to go with, wood sounds flutes, heart song flutes, high spirits flutes in their standard range. I'm not as fond of the signature flutes because they have a little bit larger bore. I like the standard ones better. Um, <clears throat> Falcon flutes, one of my favorites. One of my favorite flute makers and the reasoning behind that, no chimney, clearer sound, more affordable. You can get either a tapered mouthpiece like this or a nipple style mouthpiece. You can, you can choose either one. Most of his today, I believe, are more of the nipple style mouthpiece, which would be more similar to that design. His are even a little bit more pronounced of the nipple style than that. I just can't reach, reach them from here where I am right now. Um, <clears throat> one flute maker that I really like is Kenny King flutes. Very affordable. Um, I'm not sure if he's making standard flutes as much today as he used to. It has a mouthpiece that is very similar. It's kind of a cross between a high spirits and a wood sounds flute. But his flutes to me are slightly lacking in some of the higher harmonics, not completely. They're not, they're not real bassy, they're not real mellow. It's, it's a good compromise and I like, I like Kenny King flutes and they're even better priced than the Falcon flutes. So I would recommend Kenny King flutes. I would recommend the standard High spirits flutes, not what they call their spirit series or um, Nova series. I don't like the whistle style mouthpiece on that. I don't like the way that they sound or perform. Um, I would recommend Falcon flutes by Dana Ross. Most of theirs are, have been made more recently with a nipple style mouthpiece uh, that would be, I can't quite reach what I'm looking for. Um, the nipple style mouthpiece is a little bit more you 
elongated than this example. Um, the flutes that I make are a little bit more on the affordable side. Fairly simple, they have a fairly high gloss finish. I'm leaning towards making most of those today with a chimney because that's what people seem to prefer. They want that extra wind protection. Another flute that I would recommend price-wise and everything, um, Stellar Flutes. This one I happen to get used, but regardless, this, happens to be an E flat. Up in Washington, well-priced, you can get a kit flute from them in a couple of different configurations, which will save even more money. Um, it has a fairly tapered mouthpiece, slightly blunt end, but it doesn't get in my way. Doesn't, doesn't bother me at all. Um, So, Stellar Flutes, High Spirits Flutes, Brent Adams Flutes, um, and what was, oh, Kenny King Flutes, but I don't know how many he's making in the single flutes. He's mainly making the walking stick flutes today. Um, another one that I would recommend, he is up in Canada, is Bees native flutes. Brian Towers is the flute maker, and I can't reach one of his right now. It has a, a, a nipple style mouthpiece similar to the, um, uh, let's see, yeah, similar to the heart song flutes that I have here. Um, slightly mellower flute, so it Sometimes they're not as responsive as I would like them to be. And so they aren't necessarily my first pick, but they are definitely ones that stay in my collection. I hope taking a look at some of my Native American style flute prejudices on what I like, what I don't like, I hope this has helped you, or at least helped to answer the question of, what is my favorite flute? I don't have one. I have many, um, and I do have favorite flute makers. Some of those favorite flute makers have priced themselves out of wanting me to be their customer anymore. One flute that I haven't mentioned thus far David O'Neill is the flute maker, Rising Moon Flutes. It makes a beautiful flute, very, um, a high gloss finish that seems to be as durable. I don't think it's quite as heavy as the Wood Sounds flutes, um, but beautiful flutes. Love the sound characteristics of his flutes. He does make a range, and the last time I looked at his Etsy store site, he had uh, a fairly plain, I, I believe it was Sapelli, uh, probably an F sharp or an F, with an eagle 
type blocks, very similar to what this heart song flutes uh, block would be like. And that was sitting somewhere around the $260 price range, if I'm remembering correctly at the time of this video. Um, something like this with an ammonite fossil uh, set into a custom ring and, and all this kind of, I mean, this is, this is art along with being a very beautiful flute. Um, these are going to be three to four times the price of his simple flutes. Um, this one I happen to find used, but I would recommend his, the only, the only thing that threw me off a little bit on his flutes is when I play in mode four, I have to do a little bit of different fingering and the way that he sets his, his finger holes up and things. Um, but it's not a big deal. They play in tune, they play beautifully, they record beautifully. So another one I would recommend if you want a higher end flute, or if you can find one of his, his more basic flutes, um, very good playing flutes. So I hope that this has helped you <clears throat> in answering that question. What I like, what I don't like. Um, unfortunately, I can't tell you what my favorite flute is because I really don't have one. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that um, you will tune back in. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. And there's a bell somewhere over here that you can click on so that you could be notified the next time I do post a video. It could be nothing like this one. It could be taking a first look at a flute that comes to me. It could be taking a more in-depth flute at uh, a flute that is a part of my collection. It could be a music video where the spotlight gets shown on the Native American style flute. It could be solo, but in most cases, it's with other instruments accompanying it. Could be a tutorial on how to play the Native American style flute, one of the simplest melodical instruments in the world to learn how to play, and it's basic five note pentatonic minor scale, which is how most modern flutes today are made. Um, but if you, if you want to go into all of the intricacies that are a part of these beautiful instruments, it could take a lifetime to master. I want to thank you again for tuning in and watching, and I hope that you have a fantastic day. Take care.